Um, so uh, today's uh, Thursday, uh, the day before um, our assignment 10 is due here. So I thought I would continue on with some of the stuff that I was talking about on Tuesday. Um, I mean, I, in particular, I wanted to look at the last task or two where we do the priority queue. So I can talk about that. So uh, if you're looking for about the, you know, some information about the first couple of tasks, uh, go back to the Tuesday video. I think it was a good recording. So I talked, a little, I talked about, you know, the NQ and the DQ uh, for our A list and, and treating it as a circular buffer and uh, some of the issues that you need for that. Okay. So uh, for task four and five, we're actually going to be implementing a, a priority queue. Um, there's one method that we have to modify. I talked a little bit about this as well on Tuesday. We have to actually, what we're going to be doing is modifying the NQ method in order to, when, whenever a new item is placed on the queue, we're going to put it into our backing uh, data store structure uh, and keep that data store structure in sorted order. Okay. So basically, the NQ is going to be similar to the insert item on sorted queue idea that we did uh, in the previous assignment, uh, although we're not going to use a stack, you know, we're going to either insert it in the correct location uh, for our array, if we're doing the uh, array based priority queue, um, or we're going to insert it on the correct position for our linked list um, for the task five when we're doing the modification for the L priority queue. All right. So, um, The A priority queue and the L priority queue extends the, the object oriented uh, design for our data structures that we've gotten into so far for the last two or three assignments. So, in particular, uh, let me clear off some stuff here, get back to kind of a clean state here. So, if you look in the source and the include, you know, you'll see that there's a base class called q.hpp from which um, a, aq and lq are derived, right? And for uh, the first three tasks, you were adding stuff to the array based queue, right? Um, you know, so, you know, in particular, if we go back and look at the aq, uh, it inherits from the base class. Uh, the, the base Q class, right? It, it does public inheritance. Likewise, the, the LQ inherits from Q, right? So Q is our base class. So if you look at um, the A base priority Q, it actually inherits from Q, okay? So the a priority Q is a, uh, an array based priority Q is basically an array based Q where we override the um, in Q method to do something different. Okay, so everything that the A priority queue does is the same as the AQ. The only modification is that the in queue method um, we slightly modify to keep the array, the items on the array in sorted order by priority. Okay. So, um, so and, and we assume that this is described in here. Um, we assume that the um, um, what we mean by priority um, is defined by the type on the queue. So, so if you do a comparison, less than, greater than, um, for the value that you're trying to insert, you know, so so the item that's highest priority will always end up having will always evaluate as being greater than any other item. Um, so that means, for example, if you have a priority queue of integers, uh, basically the you know integer five is higher priority than inter integer four, right? And you can use greater than or less than to compare and figure out what the priority is. So, so that that's how we define priority in our priority queues here. Um, Um, so yeah, you should start by um, uh, adding the declaration for the in queue. So this fu function is going to have the same signature as in queue for a queue. So in fact, if, if it were me, I would just go ahead um, and um, you know copy the in queue and copy the the implementation of in queue from a queue 
into a priority queue. Okay, so you had to write the implementation in queue, but it's just going to enqueue onto the back of the array, and we have to make, make a modification to that. Okay, so we can get uh, I'll get you started on that, and you want to do the same thing for the L priority queue as well. So use the existing in queue uh, for the um, L queue uh, for the link list based queue, um, and then modify it to insert the new item in um, sorted order, right? So for uh, for a priority queue, let's just use the uh, in queue method, um, which I actually haven't uh, implemented yet. So uh, last time I only showed um, like getting started with um, task one, the front method. So um, so yeah, you know, of course, before you work on this task, you'll want to have gotten task two and three done where you have the in queue method, right? So um, I'll go ahead and put the signature in for that. Um, and, but yeah, I don't have an example uh, implementation uh, for that. So, so you do have to complete the task for that. So, so for in queue, for example, that should be part of the interface or our base class Q method, right? So if we've defined in Q, we need to implement that um, in um, like our basic queues, for example. Um, oh, I did have uh, in Q there. So um, I guess I did show that. So I had in Q, um, so I was wrong. So, so yeah, that's what we want. So, so here we've got uh, in Q. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, yeah. So I didn't. I hadn't done that yet. So um, we want to have our in queue. I mean, you need to have done this for like tasks uh, two and three. So, so kind of like we did the front. Um, I'll just create the um, um, signature for in queue, and. Um, I'll go ahead and make a stub function for this, right? So it's a void function, doesn't return anything. So if we go to our uh, AQ implementation file, um, I kind of want to have this after the clear method. So let's find the clear method. Um, we have to do all the usual things. So we need some function documentation. In this case, we've got one parameter. All right, it's a void function, so it's not returning anything. Um, and we need all the usual stuff. So this is, um, all these classes are template classes. So all the member functions are template functions. Um, and this is a member function of the AQ templatized on type T, right? And it's a void function, so it doesn't have to do anything. So after adding that, everything should still compile for me. If I rebuild. All right, so it's still compiling. Uh, of course, um, so like I said, you know, you need to add in the implementation. This is like task two or three, right? So for in queue, for the um, um, array based queue, you've got the, the back index, right? And that's the place where you want to add the item. And in fact, I kind of drew this up on the whiteboard. I guess I think I still have it up there, right? So, um, so for example, uh, well, I was showing the, the circular buffer, but you know, if you're in queuing to the back, um, the 
back index is currently pointing to one, we need to increment it. Whatever it is, uh, where that's pointing. Being careful that the back index happens to be at the end of your allocation size, that you wrap it back around to zero. That's the zero index of your array storage there. So that's, that's kind of what MQ needs to do. It should be a three or four line function for the array-based um, Q. Um, although you also have to check, um, oh, you do, I should go back. So, I mean, I did talk a little bit about this on Tuesday, but um, Um, you do need to call. I mean, it is possible that your queue is that, that the array is currently full, so you should call the grow queue if needed first before you do any of the stuff to make sure you've got enough room to insert uh, one more item, right? And then, of course, also make sure the increment size by one. Right? So, so that all needs to be done for task three, right? So you need to call the grow list. Um, increment back in that by one, um, being careful to wrap around the buffer if, if you have to be at the end of your array buffer. Um, The new item into our back index now points, right? And then increment size. Right? And I think that's kind of all the steps you need to do. Okay. All right, so back to priority queue, right? So, um, as I was saying, so you should really start, I mean, basically the signature um, and um, the implementation that you have here gets you 90% of the way to having this implemented, okay? So, um, our in queue um, is going to have the same signature everywhere, including for the uh, linked list based queues and our array based queues. So it's always going to take a new item of type T, it's going to be a void function, right? So, so we can take the signature from a queue um, and add it into here, right? So uh, another hint about this, I mean, we're not going to be overriding or implementing any other method. We're going to be implementing in queue because we need to override, right? Again, we're publicly inheriting from the array-based queue to implement the priority queue. But the only method that's going to change is, is we're going to do something slightly different on in queue to keep the, the queue sorted. So we can implement our priority-based queue. There, right? So we got that. Um, and then um, I'll just take my implementation. So since the um, priority array-based priority queue publicly inherits from um, the array-based queue, we've got all the same um, data and private member variables. So we got the front index, the back index, we got the array of values, right? So. Um, Uh, so you can start with that, and that could compile and run. Um, but then, you know, if you uncomment the test for the priority-based in queue, which I haven't even looked at yet, but um, so there's a there's separate um, files now. So so when you get to task four and five, there's tests for the A priority queue and test for the L priority queue. Right? So. Um, now that I've put the in queue into my priority queue, this ought to compile, uh, even if I uncomment these, I hope. Um, so yeah, there, there's two. There, there's one that tests the priority queue using um, integers. So you can probably do these one by one. And there's one for strings. So let's see if it's true that it's actually still compiling. 
with what I just showed there. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, so we need the BQ. So, you know, again, if you've gotten past task two, you should have had that in there. I, I just didn't show putting that signature in there. Um, so yeah, to get, to get this all to compile, I, I also need my signature for the DQ, or my implementation for the DQ for my um, array-based queue. Um, and the signature for this function is, you know, it doesn't, doesn't return anything, doesn't take anything as input. So it's, um, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to be a little bit quick here and skip over the rest of the documentation. You guys shouldn't do that, but um, uh, it needs to be a template function. It needs to be a member of the AQ templatized on T class here. All right. So in DQ is kind of pretty similar to in queue, right? So you just have to increment, well, you have to, to get the, the, the front, um, the um, front index should be pointing to the item at the front of the queue. So, so you want to, to, to return the item at the front index. Um, so you might have to remember that item because um, then you want to, but you, but you know, as part of this, you also want to increment front index being careful to wrap it around. Um, and then, and then return that item. Oh no, you're not returning yet. So, so yeah, you don't even have to remember that. You just have to increment front index. So, so, so front acts actually access the, the front item, but DQ just removes it from in the front of the queue. So all you have to do is increment the front index, uh, being careful to wrap around. Uh, the, the the other um, complication for DQ is is you are supposed to check if the queue is currently empty and throw an exception. So, so you, are, you are supposed to do that first before you. Uh, uh, increment the front index and you also need to, to reduce the size by one after you remove the item from a queue. Okay, we'll see if that compiles. Um, so that compiled, but uh, we had a um, link issue here. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, I, did, I had added the in queue to the um, uh, array based priority queue. Um, oh yeah, we probably have to uncomment um, the the um, things. Uh, no, it's so uncommented there. So uh, oh, um, so I did mess up. Um, one other thing, when I copy this over. Um, so this is a member of the A priority queue. So that's that's an easy thing to miss, right? So that that was what I missed here. So the reason why it doesn't think that there's an implementation of in queue uh, in A priority queue is because I didn't specify one. So so you know even though this is in that file, that doesn't mean that it's a member of it, of the A priority queue. This is what determines what it's a member function of that you're implementing. Here. All right, so that actually compiled cleanly and linked cleanly as well. So. Uh, but of course, yeah, right, it's run, and it is running the test, um, although all, not all the tests are passing. Right? So once you get that far, then you can uh, make the modifications to the A priority queue, okay? So instead of just um, in queuing um, on the front, um, like we did here, um, you do need to do kind of the, the same first thing. So you have to check grow list if needed, right? Because if, if the array is currently full, 
you do need to make it bigger so you can add a new item. Um, but um, yeah, and you can start the, the, the so this is the suggested um, algorithm. So you should start by just uh, uh, doing the same thing that you did for the in queue. Uh, in the non-priority based one. So just insert it as the, the, the back item, right? So um, so you can keep this code the same, increment back index by one and put that new item where the back index is. Now, once you've got it there, we're gonna, we're gonna go backwards through the array, um, bubbling the item. So, so swapping it. Um, um, or you can just swap or you can just um, um, think of it as, um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, shifting the items until you get it to its correct place, right? So you don't, you can think of it as swapping. Um, um, you don't really need to, 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 to swap every time. So basically, um, Yeah, so it basically instead of, for, for the, the, the second option, instead of putting the new item at the end of the queue, just start, think about um, that you're shifting item. So as long as the item um, that's at the back of the array um, is of lower priority, just shift it up by one until you find an item that's of greater or equal priority. At that point, that's the place that you want to insert um, the value into the queue. All right. So, so you do need to iterate backwards. And, and again, you have to be careful, though. So it is tricky. You have to be careful because um, um, you have to handle that the, the buffer is circular. So as you're going backwards, you might go, you know, below zero and have to wrap back around to the, the highest value. All right. Um, so let me show you again, you know, doing this out by hand. Um, might help you make sense of things. So, so let me let me show you what you're doing um, um, as an example. So let's let me modify this array a bit. So let, let's say that the array currently has the front index pointing to eight. Um, and remember, this is um, a priority-based queue. So the item should be sorted by priority with the highest priority item at the front. So let's say we've got four items. And let's just say these are integers. So the, the value of the integer represents the priority as well. So. Right. Back index is, is here, some for wrapped around, right? And size is four. But the current allocation size is still 10. Okay. So let's say that we want to uh, insert a value of priority four here. Okay. So, um, like I was saying, you could, you could just do the, the things that we were doing for the non-priority based one. So we could increase the size by one, uh, increase the back index, be careful to wrap it around. And insert the new value back. And, and then now we need to figure out the correct place to put it, okay? So what we want to do, if you think of this as like bubble sorting, swapping, you want, you want to compare this with the previous and swap them if they're out of order, right? Because four is greater than one, so it should be uh, ahead of the, the queue. 
And then you would compare these and swap them. And then again, notice, so this is where it begins tricky because you have to, to be aware that if I'm comparing zero, if I'm at index zero, that the previous one in the queue wraps back around to the allocation size minus one. So I need to compare four with three swap those, so index zero with index nine. Uh, and this point, when you compare four and five, a swap shouldn't happen because uh, five is bigger than four, right? So, so you need to stop the swapping. So that's the basic idea. Um, The second is mostly equivalent, but um, if you think of it as just shifting items, so in that case, you don't really have to, 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 to do like a swap. You could just uh, start by seeing if that value um, is less than this. And if it is, you just need to shift it down. One. Then we check that one. So if that value is, um, less and we're shifting these down so we can make a hole for the location where we need to insert this item into it, right? so this item is less and so we want to shift it down and again be careful to wrap around but this item is less so we want to shift it down and now at this point this item is not left less so that tells us that our new value should be going here as the hole that we're going to make So you just overwrite, write, write it in there, right? Because when you shift them down, you're copying them to a new location. So, just basically, the, the basic algorithm is you have to go backwards. So, so you have to start at the back index and be, you know, so, so set something like um, um, I equals back index, right? Um, and then, you know, compare I to I minus one. Um, if you're swapping or compare this to I minus one, right? If it's, you know, it's out of order, then you have to do the, the, the shift or the swap. At that point, you want to increment i. When you increment i, or sorry, you, you want to decrement i. So, so you know, i, I was 2, and i minus 1 would be 1 to start off with. So when you decrement i, you know, uh, uh, i becomes 1. But, you know, you decrement i, and if i becomes less than 0, set i back to not right and you have to do the same thing for i minus one so or, or you know so after we decrement i i mean uh, it could be that i is zero so i minus one would be negative one so in that case you have to check um so what i what i normally do for that just more hints here so i start by saying current equals back index so current would be uh, index two here Um, uh, again, this is before we've done the shifting, so let me get this back to what it looked like. So, so current equals two, and um, 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 you can think of it as like pre equals current minus one, so, so uh, two minus one or one. So those give you the two indexes that you need to be comparing. How are we going to be doing it? swapping or shifting, right? So in this case, if pre is uh, less than the value we're trying to search, I want to copy the value from pre into current. So, so my value at current equals the value of pre. That, that would copy those. Um, 
And then once you do the check, you need to decrement this, set this to that minus one. And in both cases, you need to check if I've gone to negative one. If that's the case, set to zero. So, so the next one, when we decrement, this becomes one. This is one less than that. So that's zero, so we're still fine. The next iteration, you subtract one from here, that's zero. This is zero minus that. So then you have to have something like an if statement that detects. So if I've gone negative, pre should be set to allocation size. It's minus one. So allocation size minus one would be nine in this case. And then when we um, check one more time, this would become negative one. So, so again, we should check. Um, so not, not that negative, we should set that to nine. Um, and then this becomes that minus. And you need to keep doing that as long as the value that you're checking um, is lower priority. As soon as you find something that's equal or higher priority, you stop doing the shifting or the swap. So that is. Um, basically the algorithm described um, uh, in the task four um, uh, in this part here. Okay, and then um, um, kind of uh, quickly, uh, so five, five minutes on L priority queue. So everything that I kind of showed to get started on the A priority queue, you have to do for the L priority queue. Although in this case, you know, you've already um, have an implementation of the uh, MQ method. So you didn't have to write that one, that was given to you. So if you look at the um, LQ.HPP, um, there should be a MQ method already in there. Right, so you know you can take that and, and copy it to the L priority queue um, header file. Because we're going to be overriding the in queue from the, the base uh, L queue class for L priority queue. Um, and likewise, you know, um, there's an implementation of an actual implementation for the linked list based queue of NQ, which you can start with as your starting point. For the um, L priority queue. So in this case, as I found out before, I mean, the only difference should be that um, this is now a member function of the L priority queue. So, um, so if you look at the existing uh, in queue for the linked list based, you know, you had to implement something like this for um, stacks and things to, to push new items on the top. Um, so we create a new node. Um, if it's empty, we just set uh, the front node uh, to the new node. Um, otherwise, we're in queuing it on the back. So uh, we set backs, back nodes next to be new node. Uh, and then in either case, this new node is the new back node for the non or non priority based uh, queue implementation. So, um, and we increment size by one, right? So that, that's all we do um, normally to insert it to the back of our priority queue. Um, so that should compile and run.
I let that compile and ran. So um, as it's described here, though, so actually um, I suggest because basically we, we're, we're using a singly linked list. So you can't really insert the node as the back node and kind of bubble it in that direction. You don't have pointers in that direction. So um, so I suggest, um, again, kind of either a bubbling or uh, an insertion sort of approach. So let me show what that means, right? So for our linked list, um, you have something like this. So let's say we have the same values on our, on our queue, but, uh, but of course we have a linked list based. Um, Backing storage. So in this case, we've got nodes five, three, five, three, two, and one. Right. And we should we should still have the uh, front node. Uh, what, what, what did we call those variables? I can't remember. Um, front node and back node. Right. So we got pointers to the front node and the back node. So like I said, if, if you if you keep the, the code and insert it to become the new back, uh, you, you can't really follow the pointers to get it bubbled to the correct place. So I would um, I would suggest that you start by um, like if you want to do the swapping method, you can start by inserting it to become the new front node. So, so again, if we're trying to insert value four, we, we would create it'd be like pushing to the front. Um, instead of, you know, like we did for our stack, basically, right? So you create a new node, make it the new front node. Point it here, right? Now, if you do that, really, I mean, you can, you can uh, do swapping, just swapping the value. So, so you would keep the nodes, so you got the nodes what you want, but you would just compare the current node to the next node, and as long as they're out of order, just uh, do a swap of the value, right? So here, a four is less than five, right? But you know, a four is not less than three, so you can stop there. Right? So in this case, the, the swapping might be easier for a lot of people to understand. The other suggestion is to do kind of an insertion of the new node into the correct position. So in that case, you would create a new node. So the front is here. So you would create your new node. Um, but then you would, you would start looking, right? So I, I would start by having like say current to this, right? So as long as current is greater than or equal to the value that we're trying to insert here, uh, you want to go to the next one. Uh, although, you know, you, you have to keep track of the previous when you do that. So, so um, if I move that, um, so yeah, you might want to start with like previous, pre there, uh, do something, maybe a special case if you have to insert it to be the, you know, if I'm trying to insert a new node like six, um, you can handle that as a special case. Otherwise, if you know that it's, it, it's not going to become the new highest priority node, then you can do this. Just start with pre pointing to here, but you're going to be uh, using pre's next value, right? So in this case, right away, pre's next value is less than um, the value we're trying to insert. Um, so in that case, you would set your new nodes next, equal previs next, basically inserting it into the list here, right? Um, and then previs next would be pointed to the new node. And that would get it into its correct position, right? Being careful that, you know, if I end up inserting as the new back node, that the back node gets updated. It goes all the way down here. Because in this case, for the queue, the back node is important. You know, that pointer has to point to the last one because when you, uh, um, 
when you want to dequeue an item off the back of the queue, uh, you need to um, keep track of that. So, um, although let me check something. There, there might have been something. Um, real quickly, let me look at something here about the uh, in queue and the DQ for our um, linked list based queue here. So, Yeah, so when we're in queuing, we're in queuing the, the nodes on the back node. So the, the node at the back um, is the, the back of the queue. Um, and, and when we dequeue, um, we just remove the front node. Okay. So yeah, the, the front node should be the highest priority node or the, the node at the front of the queue. So, so yeah, I, I, I was doing that kind of the right way there. So. Um, all right, so um, that's kind of it for this session. I'll go ahead and post this video as usual. Um, so as you're working, please keep sending me questions like people have been doing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later then.